Hi there, sir. How are you? Good. How are you there? I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank so you. So, how is everything? Everything's good. It's good. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I've been confused for the last couple of days because I'm, I'm doing math and uh, I don't quite understand uh, when I see an x-intercept and when I see a zero, it, say, it seems like the same thing. So, <laughs> what, what's that all about? Well, many people think that they are same, you know, you're not the only one. Yeah. It took me a lot of time to really understand how to explain the difference between zeros and x-intercepts. Yeah. Well, you can see it like this. When we talk about x-intercept, we are basically talking about a graph and we are seeing where the graph meets the x-axis. Yeah. So, that is the x-intercept. <clears throat> well, when we are talking about zeros, then we are saying at what point does we have a zero value for f of x? So, there is a whole difference in concept and so, what we, what I feel is that one, this could be a difference. Well, at the end we land at the same point because on the x-axis you have the x-intercept and at the x-axis the value of the function is also zero. Correct? Well, that's one way of looking at it. But, you know what, all zeros are not x-intercepts. That's kind of funny. Why? Why is that? <laughs> we only deal with, you know, real numbers. Zeros could be real or imaginary. Uh, so the imaginary zeros don't really come on the x-intercepts. Okay, yeah. So what you see on x-intercepts are really real zeros. So they're not imaginary zeros. And uh, imaginary zeros, do you know what they are? I'm not, I'm not sure what those are. I, I, I understand that real x-intercepts, uh, real zeros are on the line, but imaginary zeros, uh, <laughs> God knows what those are. Oh, God. You remember the quadratic formula which we used to find uh, the solution of equations? Yeah, yeah. I know that. And then we have a there b square minus 4ac within the square root. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is called discriminant. Yeah. And this discriminant could be zero, could be greater than zero or less than zero. Mm. If it is less than zero, you get a negative number within a radical. Yeah. And <laughs> in real numbers, you don't have any solution for that. Yeah, that's all right. That's all so right. yeah, so you don't have a real solution that. But ultimately, there is a formula and it works. So when you get a negative number under the radical, the solution which you get is actually a complex number, not real. Well, that is one more difference which I could point out. But there is one which will help you to understand uh, things in a different perspective. Uh -huh. you, you've got to do polynomials this year in advanced functions. Yeah, that's what I'm starting to learn yeah. about. <laughs> there, it makes you feel, let's look into zeros in a different way now. Or rather, x intercepts. If I draw a line, you will see that x axis, it will just cross like an arrow, right? Yeah, it just yeah. dashes through like a straight line. Yeah. So, let's say, equation is simple, y equals to x, and then we have a line going through the origin, just crossing like an arrow, right? Yeah. How about the zero for y equals to x squared, the quadratic function? Does it process the line? No, no, it just it just touches the line. It doesn't really go, go through. Go it. through, right? Yeah. That's also an x-intercept and also a zero, right? Yeah. But this is kind of a different. So we have y equals to x square and at origin we do have x-intercept. Mm -hmm. But this zero is different because it bounces back. It doesn't go through like that. Oh, okay, okay, so okay, actually okay. what happens here, it is like x times x. Okay. Effectively, there are two zeros there, not just one, which could have crossed through, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so these two, they don't know what to do. They just fight there and they bounce back. And have you seen a graph for x cube? Have you seen a graph for x cube? Uh, yeah, I've seen that. It goes. Uh, How does it go? It is it, it, it go through or bounce back, but it actually goes uh, it makes a curving line like this. Curving line is right. You can think like x cube is three x's, right? Yeah. Or you can say one x and two x squares. So the x tells it to go through, and x squared tells it to bounce back. So kind of confused. So it just gets there and things and then moves forward, like, yeah. like a good curve like this. Yeah. So this is like a third kind of zero which you see, you know. Mm. All yeah. three are zeros, right? Yeah. And all three are x-intercepts. Mm. They have a difference. The way they go or their behavior near the x-intercept is very different, right? Yeah. Yeah. That is because of the multiplicity of the zeros. So at the same point or the x-intercept which you're talking about, we have different kinds of zeros. The line zero was a linear zero, just single. We say multiplicity one or order one. But for the quadratic function, yeah. you have x square and this order is two, x to the power of two. Yeah. Multiplicity is two and that kind of zero gives, like bouncing back, it doesn't cross the line at all. Yeah, okay. It's very, so no, we don't have to cross the line. Mm -hmm. It just bounces back. 
and the X cube is in between. It yeah. thinks and goes. <laughs> so there are three zeros at the same point. Oh, so okay. what we find is zeros also tell us behavior of the graph or the curve okay. at the X intercept. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's that's a, that's how they are very different. You know? okay. X intercept is just a point yeah. uh, which touches the graph and the X axis. Yeah, but zero has that hidden uh, it can be many behavior, it can be a lot behavior of yeah. uh, into it. Mm -hmm. So that, that's it. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah. 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 Thanks. So I hope you understand now. Yeah, I get it now. It <laughs> clears my understanding. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. good. Yeah.